2014 marked the 175th anniversary of the Sisters of Charity's arrival in Australia and gave us all the opportunity to reflect upon and celebrate their remarkable contribution to social justice, health and education, which has indelibly shaped our nation. To mark the occasion, the Foundation embarked upon the Asylum Seeker Housing Project, a project to provide good quality, safe housing for one of the most marginalised groups in our community, asylum seekers that are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. According to the Asylum Seeker Centre of New South Wales, approximately 45% of community-based asylum seekers are homeless, 70% receive no government support, 50% have no work rights, 50% have been in detention and 30% have mental health issues. Access to decent housing is fundamental to quality of life. A decent standard of living protects against mental health problems and is essential for recovery from mental health issues associated with the torture and trauma experienced by many asylum seekers. In an effort to honour the values and mission of the Sisters of Charity of Australia, to be extensively useful wherever a need is perceived, the Foundation has purchased a property in Petersham that will be managed by the Asylum Seeker Centre of New South Wales to provide housing and assistance to 20 asylum seekers at risk at any given time. It is an ambitious project for the Foundation and will be our largest single investment to date. However, we believe it suitably encapsulates the Sisters' mission to ensure the poor have for love what the rich have for money and is of practical assistance to a disadvantaged group with profound needs. It is a project that honours the Sisters' social justice legacy and also signals that the Foundation is well placed to continue the Sisters' social justice works into the future. First and, and greatest challenge for them when they first arrive are that all our clients are people who've had been forced to flee their countries of origin due to persecution, war, experiencing terror. The journey itself to Australia is incredibly arduous and so when they arrive they're traumatised. As you know my country had genocide in 1994 so I had to flee to, to Congo forest. I stayed there for eight years and then when I came back to my country, my husband was taken away and I was put in a jail and luckily I escaped. When I escaped, because I couldn't find my kids, I thought they were killed too. So when I left my country, I didn't have anything else with me. It was only myself. They were also alone. They've often had to leave their whole community, their families behind. So I think that's the first and greatest challenge. After that, I think one of the greatest challenges they face is homelessness. 75% of our clients arrive at the centre on their first day are homeless or about to become homeless. And that in itself is a challenge for, for anyone Homelessness is, is a breach of, any, of your basic human rights. When I arrived in uh, this centre, I was like a um, baby. Um, no money, no, in, I couldn't speak uh, anymore. And the other third challenge that we've got at the moment is that the government policy is changing at the moment and marginalising further people already struggling to survive. So that at the moment, 70% of people are denied any form of government support and 50% of our clients, half of our clients, have no right to work. I was actually desperate. <laughs> I, 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 I was in tears. Um, actually, talking about this is more difficult than talking about when I, uh, when I left. I don't know why. Now, they helped me to uh, uh, study in English and uh, study in many courses. They give me and everything, mm, money, accommodation, English lessons. Uh, they employed me, 
helped open cleaning company and they gave me job. The generosity of the sisters will have an incredible impact on our clients. Many of our clients have not felt safe and secure for many years, some of them for their entire lives. So giving them a safe, secure place to live amongst others who, who are going through similar experiences will have a huge impact on their recovery from the trauma they've experienced. So I think having that safe environment for the first month will have an impact on the rest of their lives, on their recovery. I think many of them will speak of it as an oasis and will have incredible memories um, that they'll hold dear to their hearts. I also think the location of the house is really significant. They'll be in walking distance from the centre. They'll receive intensive casework every day. They'll also have access to all of our services, to our health services, to our nutrition, food, to our education, our recreation, and also importantly, to our employment service. So it will set them on an incredible path to recovery. Um, and I think having that intensive support at the beginning will have a big impact on the long-term recovery. Before, because I was always asking for something, I was like a burden to the society. And when I got my job, I felt like now I'm, I'm being a productive member of the society, not a burden. So I needed people to reassure me that I'm still, life goes on. Despite the fact that I have lost everything. Look, one of the things I'd like to say about our clients, I've talked to you about the trauma they've experienced, but one thing we haven't spoken about is their incredible strength, their incredible resilience. They're survivors. They've been through so much. But when they arrive here, yes, they're traumatised, but the strength and their spirit shines through in all of them. In our work, I feel so privileged to be able to meet the people I see every day at the centre to be part of their lives, to be part of putting them on the track to recovery. Um, but one of the most rewarding things to see is when they come back to the centre in their new lives. Um, you know, they, they've rebuilt their lives. Um, they use that courage, that strength and that resilience to go on and do fantastic things. Many of them go on to help others, um, either other asylum seekers or other people um, you know, who, who are struggling themselves. One of our clients came back and he is working with handicapped people and He's been through the most incredibly challenging experiences. His story itself um, is one of the hardest stories I've ever listened to. Um, but he actually said to me, you know, I'm helping people less fortunate than myself. Um, people who've suffered more than I have. Um, and I just thought that was such a testament to the sort of person that he was and, and his spirit to be able to go on and say that and to work with people and help them every day. Um, I think the other thing that, uh, you know, our, our clients, the people we serve, bring to the Australian community is that I think it actually says it's a great measure of a community how we treat our most marginalised, the marginalised people in the community. And I think, um, you know, part of being Australian, part of be being who we are, is that we've always been an open and generous community. And I think asylum seekers are allowing us to show that generosity again. And, and I know personally, but also from all the experiences that volunteers at the centre, we all gain more from the experience um, than what we give in serving our clients. I don't think that you can get much lower. No. But now, ah, oh, bring it on. Yeah, I'm up for everything and anything. Ah, uh, the centre helped me with everything. It was like what mother teaching her baby would make first steps. With their friendship, their kindness, their generosity, I could feel I'm still a human being. I could see life positively. The incredible gift that the sisters have given us will enable us to serve thousands of asylum seekers, people who are marginalised, who are the most needy in our community at the moment, to provide them with an oasis, a safe place to rebuild their lives and go on to live productive and useful lives. Thank you so much for trusting us with that gift.